Palapel Island. That's the real name of the island. The 6.5 acres of the island is mostly rock. It sits 50 miles north of New York City and 1,000 feet from the Hudson River's eastern shore. It's been known as Bannerman's Island because Mr. Bannerman wrote his name across the buildings, Bannerman Island Arsenal. There was nothing on the island. He had to build everything that was there. How long did that take? 1901 to 1918. When you see this beautiful Scottish castle out here, it was actually a, a warehouse. Francis Bannerman VI purchased the island in November of 1900 to supplement his storeroom in Brooklyn, which was not large enough to provide a safe location to store 30 million surplus munitions cartridges. And the city of Brooklyn would not allow him to have that. In the spring of 1901, he began to build an arsenal on the island. Bannerman designed the buildings himself in the Scottish style, but let the constructors interpret the designs on their own. That was a lodge, the round building, where he had workers, and there was a workshop downstairs where they would bring the materials out, and then they'd ship it from the harbor here. Bannerman was a Scottish American patriot. He loved everything Scottish, so there's a lot of references to Scotland here. Although this structure from the Scottish Gilded Age may seem out of place in the Hudson Valley, it was actually ahead of its time. You could say Mr. Bannerman was a recycler. He used recycled materials, including 1903 rod bayonets that held the round finial uh, cannonball designs on the, on the buildings. If it was metal and he couldn't sell it, it went into the building as rebar. He built a, a really wonderful breakwater here in 1904 out of old coal barges, which he sank into the water, and he would uh, cover them with dirt and, and concrete walkways. He would place uh, sentinels or little build little round towers around them to form a harbor okay. and that's what you see today uh, you see uh, what what he called the twin tower which looks like a bridge we had some of them for actually get write a letter you know they said I was distasteful that we called it the twin towers we didn't call it the twin towers Bannery called it the twin towers before the twin towers were even built that thing does look like it's gonna go yep uh, so we're, we're, you know, but, and it could be saved, but you need a couple hundred thousand. If you don't maintain the base and everything and maintain the, the, the structure, it, it's a problem. And it needs to be dead low tide. You need to get in there quickly if you need to go with it. But we have to stop with this project and move on to the tower so it doesn't fall. It's the next priority. After Bannerman's death in 1918, the island experienced a series of disasters. Lightning was known to strike the flagpoles. Then 200 pounds of powder and shells exploded, literally blowing the doors off the structure and depositing remnants onto the shores of the Hudson. On August 8, 1969, a fire that burned for three days devastated the arsenal, and the roofs and floors were destroyed. The island was placed off limits to the public. But the bad luck didn't stop there. In January 2010, we lost two and a half walls of the tower that are out here. From the moment you step on the island, rule. Everyone wears a hard hat, and all are mindful of the constant threat of collapse. But that just adds to the adventure. Although most of the buildings were devoted to the storing of army surplus, Bannerman built another castle in a smaller scale on top of the island, near the main structure, as a residence. It's called Crag Inch Lodge and he would live here and he would keep working on it until 1918 when he built the sun porch and the sleeping porch there, which was the last structures to be built on the island. In early 2011, the stabilization of the residence began with the installation of a new roof and floors, some masonry repairs, and bracing for emergency stabilization purposes. The residence is going to be an interpretive center. It'll be a museum and an interpretive center there. You're doing a door here, you're doing a door down. Are these for the downstairs? We needed to have a project to start on. This was a reasonable starting project, and this project to do the tower would be millions and millions of dollars. So, it, and it, you really can't get millions and millions of dollars all at once. You could get people to say, oh, why didn't you do the tower first? And I say to them, why didn't you give us money to help do it? Stay with us, baby. It scares me when it's windy. What are you worried about? worried about it falling down. But usually it's the wind and the ice and the freeze and fall that go and put the ice pushes you're, it. And it you're thinking this, this structure right here? Yep. Everybody, we could do this. We could save these structures, but we are under a race of time. If everybody in the Hudson Valley were to give us just $10, and I mean not two or three, I mean a lot of people, all of you, send $10 to 
bannermancastle.org where it says donate. Just $10. You could, you could give more if you want to. That's okay, too. Since belonging to Bannerman, there have only been two owners of the island, and when the Rockefeller Foundation sold it to the people of New York State in 1967, that made it yours and mine, our own private island. And it's in hands we can trust, the good hands of the Bannerman Castle Trust.